we could get food, rest, advice. Oh, hello, hello, YouTube. What's going on? Welcome back. Uh, I owe it to Denon to follow up with the 6700H issue video that I posted talking about some of the glitches or whatnot that I noticed. As you can see, the system still works. I am watching the Hobbit series. This is the, the first in the trilogy, the extended edition. I am watching an Atmos Sound. Got all of the speakers active. Uh, my two channel system on the computer is completely separate, so let's not get confused. Have the Monolith Encore series there. I have the bookshelf underneath for the center channel tower there. Uh, surround channels all the way around. It's really, really dark in here. And you can see that they're there. And then the height channels are up top. So the unit does work, as you can see. It is on. Uh, I want to just show the volume. So you can see there, eco mode is turned on. And I'm pretty sure if I change it, we will have the same problems as yesterday. So shall we test that theory? I'll zoom in. We'll change the auto mode. And the sound stops. So in regular mode, there's something wrong with the issue, but eco mode stays on. So it's a follow-up to the issue. The unit is stable. I'm just using it in eco mode. So whatever is wrong with the power train or the power relays in the regular power mode, um, it is not working. It pretty much fails consistently now in regular mode. In eco mode, it seems fine. Now, I don't understand exactly why that is. Is it using a different power rail? Is the, the power connection, the capacitors, the relays, whatever it is. I mean, it does work for a little bit of time, but then it fails. So that could be a capacitor issue. Now, I don't know um, if there's any danger to the speakers when they're connected like that. I don't want to risk it. So the unit will be going in for repair as soon as possible. I was given instructions by the vendors. There is a local place that I can deal with repairs. Uh, they will have to issue an RMA. It might take about two weeks for me to get that uh, unit back again. Um, I don't know, seems very, very strange. Let me just go on camera here for a second. I don't understand what's going on at all. Um, I've had this unit for almost two years uh, or two and a half years now. The, the two year range is in July, uh, the three year warranty is up in July. Uh, I've been using it pretty consistently for gaming and movies. There's been no problems up until a couple weeks ago. No loud, no loud volumes, uh, no surges, no power glitches. No, I haven't been changing any kind of content. I haven't added any new devices. There were no problems with the speakers, no sign of any glitching. Basically just app switching and HDMI switching on the Xbox. But that's it. I don't understand what happened. I have no idea why it's failing like this. Um, some people may know that I did have a 4308CI Denon unit uh, for almost 13 years until that unit also started failing, uh, having sound dropouts. Uh, I never, it never went into protection. But the center channel, sometimes the left channel, the right channel would start to go out. So if I turn the unit off and all the relays and all that stuff, it powers into standby mode. And you turn it back on again and the power relays and the speaker relays click in, then the sound would come back. So it sounds like there's a fairly consistent problem with relays in the switching. Now, if you know receivers have to deliver power to multiple channels at the same time. And depending on the configuration that you set up, the physical hardware inside the amplifier or the receiver changes its orientation to deliver power to those amp channels. If they're not configured or if they're not connected, the relays or the switches will turn off. In the X6700H, they have what's called a preamp mode which means all of the power relays can be turned off and the power will be sending only low level or low level voltage to the pre-out, which are RCAs. That's one way to reduce the amount of power. 
I could use this unit as a preamp and get a power amp now for each of the speakers. That might be one thing that I can do. I know that there's a lot of budget options for amps, something that I can just use temporarily. It does still work in eco mode, which leads me to believe if I turned it into preamp mode for 11 channels, it may still work. So that might be an option for me going forward, even if I get it repaired under warranty. Now, I don't know why there's a problem in the power, and if they can fix it, they can fix it. If they don't know how to fix it, I'll probably get a replacement unit because it's under warranty. But we'll have to see. For now, I don't know what's gonna happen, and I'm just enjoying what I can from my gaming system movies, enjoying The Hobbit. <laughs> So that is what it is. Thank you for watching and joining and listening and following and commenting on the previous video. Again, I don't mean to shame and put down Denon for their issues. It's a mass market product. You're definitely going to have issues with mass marketed things. It's electronics. Any number of things could have happened there. Uh, we did get into winter. My window is behind the TV right here, so it's fairly cold. The X67 is underneath the the other table, so it doesn't overheat. I've got fans on it. Um, every other every other factor that I can think of that would cause a problem is not there. So I'm 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 unsure. I don't know what to say to watch out for or to protect yourself or to as a means of advice, but if you're noticing anything going on with your, your units, don't hesitate because it can cause further problems. It's good to at least have good skills or know what to troubleshoot or how to troubleshoot. You don't want to run into issues where um, you the unit starts to fail and you're not sure how to handle it. So. Clearly this works just fine in eco mode. I just want to say that. Again, that's the unit there. There, there are fans on top of it, you can see. It's fully ventilated. I mean, there's a lot of cables in there, so I don't know if that's an issue. But I mean, otherwise it's been okay. There we go. So anyways, thank you for watching this video, this follow-up. Like I said, I owe it to Denon to follow up, and I know that they've been handling it. I spoke to two different agents in one day. They were both informative and helpful, and they guided me through the process. They talked through the troubleshooting, the reset options, the firmware reset options. Um, it does look like it's a physical uh, electronic failure or fault, so it will have to go into repair. It's under warranty, so there's no risk to me. The only problem is... I will have to go without any kind of receiver or power in the system. Now, fortunately, I have an Xbox that's down here. Everything is black in my room. Everything's dark. Um, can't see anything. So I can play the Xbox with the headphones through the controller. The TV doesn't need a receiver for visuals, so that's fine. I can manage with my content like that for a while. However, if I'm watching movies, the same thing, I'll have to just use headphones and the only way I'm going to get headphones out is through the Xbox controller itself. It's not exactly hi-fi, but you know what? It is a band-aid on a bigger problem. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to get to eating my snacks. I mean, I just had some craft dinner and I'm going to top that up with some protein. Some pretty cool stuff there. Actually, let me see. There you go. That's my snacks for the day. That'll probably be my YouTube thumbnail. That'll be really funny. People are going to be wondering what the hell's going on. What's this guy eating tuna and snacks, listening to his, his computer at 192K? <laughs> Anyhow, that's enough for me. I will see all of you guys later. Thank you very much for watching and following. I will update if I get any news. And until the next time, have a great Saturday.